Elixir proudly sponsors Smoke to Paint on Saturday. gentlemen in Vaporland, I'm your host for the next hour, my name's Andy and I'm called Smoke to Vape on YouTube and things and on here as well, seems to have stuck a little bit and um, welcome, I'm on the same chair and it keeps deflating, Ah, there'll be no deflating tonight, well there probably will be, actually it doesn't fit, it feels like it might fall off, that might throw the show into a bit of chaos, anyway I hope we're all well on this Saturday evening, ah I've had a busy day today, went out with the kids, and I've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes trying to get the show ready, because I've been working on some other things as well this week, you might be aware of. If you've watched uh, the Vapor Trails output from last week, we're busy bunnies, and um, yes, more, more on that later in the show. Also coming up on the show tonight, I've got my thoughts on this. It's shrouded in a cone at the moment, but it's a Vision Nano. Nano Nano. <laughs> Oh, I'm in a bit of a funny mood tonight. Um, and um, I've also got a, a quite sizable interview with the man behind Vape Stick. Now, if you don't know, that is the uh, e-cig, cig alike type thing that is available on uh, very on, on the way, on the, on the internet and also in Tesco and several other places. It turns out as well. So, um, also. If you were in the pre-show just a minute ago, you will also know that we've got a quite exciting Twitter bomb. We're going to drop a Twitter bomb. So, let's have a look at this. Right, I'm just going to go through the Twitter bomb idea first of all. Now, the idea is that if a group of people all tweet at the same time, it's like a flash mob on Twitter. We are all going to log into Twitter we are going to supply you with the tweet. It's all very straightforward. And you just copy and paste that tweet into the send tweet composed. I'll, walk, I'll, I'll do it with you. I'll do it with you. And uh, we've got one person targeted. Um, uh, um, we, we'll see how it goes. But we'll, uh, we'll, this might be a recurring feature on my shows. You know, we're going to try and get some reaction. This person is particularly adamant that we're all trying to quit smoking. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's fair to say amongst the team and amongst the community, she owns our goat. Right, so let's just drop into chat. Let's drop into chat and say hello. Hello, chat. Hope you're well. I'm just gonna, uh, yeah, I've had one of those days today where I was sort of running up and down hills with the kids and um, I couldn't do that when I was uh, using tobacco cigarettes, but now I'm a vapor, I can, because you know it, you know it all. Anyway, I was running up and down hills, and yes, I am slightly out of shape, it's a yes, but I'll refer you to my mug. That's how it matters. Yes, so, but you know, great day, sunny, was it sunny where you are? I hope it is. Hello. Hi, I'm now just being called nuts. I'm now just nuts. Hi, hi. <laughs> Prof, I know, the beard. I start a new job on Monday in Cardiff. So, um, so I'm going to, might, it might change its shape slightly. Anyway, shall we get on with the show? I think we should. Yes, let's do that. Right, a couple of people in chat a couple of weeks ago asked me if I'd tried one of these. It's a Vision Nano. Now I'm a big fan of the Vision and um, the idea of it being smaller is quite 
Interesting. So I'm going to refill this. I had a horrible feeling that I've done this on a previous show. I might not. I might have just dreamt it. But I'm going to fill this up, and I'm going to tell you what I think of it because I've been using it for a good, a good couple of days now, and I'm just going to. It is incredibly easy to fill. And I must have put. Mm, it holds 1.1 mil. Um, so I must have put about. I don't know, 10 mil through it, probably? Sounds about right. And all you do is you just press your nozzle against the centre pin and, and fill. And there we have it. And you can go right to the top. And uh, I might have seen one of these before. I know, I know, I know why I feel like I've done this. is because I shot a VT, but then realised that, realised that I should do it live. And I'm doing it live. Here I am now. Hi. So let's put the top back on. And you can fill them right up to the top. See, I won't tip it too much. Yeah, Matt Gluggle says great on a 510 auto, and I can I, I've been running this on my uh, on my ego sized auto, and it is great. And um, I I haven't metered it out yet. I've been meaning to. Oh, look, I'm up to 97 on the old um, MVP, and I'm running this at. A standard 3.7 volts. Now, Visions, they're workhorses. They keep going, the big ones. Uh, they hold a lot more juice, 1.6 mil, I think, approximately. And uh, this is obviously 1.1, so you're going to obviously get more less vaping time out of it. But let's just give it a go. Very, very nice vapor. It's a very satisfying vape, and the flavor has remained accurate throughout. I'm getting lower, aren't I? <sighs> oh, there we go. Um, yes, the vapor has remained accurate with flavor, good vapor production, not one dry hit. I know, amazing. Amazing, but a little it's good. It's been this one has been. I've only ordered one, so that ensures that I don't get tempted and switch flavors and then use three during a week where I should be only using one to see how long it lasts. This has lasted well, and um, actually, I can take you to take you to the website that I got it from, and that website is there. It's Vaporscape. Uh, there they are. I think I that I think I got that one. That one there, which is um, according to their website. I think that one, this one, is purple, but it looks more pinky to me. They're two ninety five each, one point one mil capacity, slim line, five ten fitting in various colours. Yeah. I can see though on the website only available in clear and black. And I will be getting some more. They are performing well. And I'm using the wrong mouse. That never helps. So yeah. Um, let me meter it out. Uh, there's not an option to get different resistances. So let me whack it on the Darwin. And show you what it's metering out at. Uh, let's put it over here. Let's go to this camera here. Oh, ting ting. One point eight. Is that one point eight? Yes, one point eight. And at four point two watts, that's putting three point three volts through it. It's very pleasant. It is very pleasant indeed. So if you want a vision experience with a smaller form factor, I would suggest you give them a go. Um, I'm probably going to order another couple and see if, you know, they're consistently good. So uh, that brings me on to the next thing in the run order. We're build building up to the bomb, people. We're building up. We're building up to it. Not quite yet, though. Where does it say? Oh, yes. 
Okay. We what we're gonna do? What we're gonna do? <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the bomb, and then the lovely people behind the scenes are gonna keep a track on what's happening, and then I'm gonna drop back to Twitter now and again to see if we've had any retweets or any action. If you see any red dots on the wall, um, then the snipers have found me. But um, it's all of us. We're all in this together and we're going to tweet together. So, right. Let me just drop in a quick sting, gather my thoughts, and then we are going to drop the bomb. Okay, I apologise about the freeform nature of the show, but this is probably as interactive as I get with the current technology. That is going to change because I'm getting new technology, but um, that has yet to happen. So I've got to work it in a certain way that may be a little bit clunky, but we'll see what happens. Right, now, could the people behind the scenes, the lovely Sav... Or Daz, I can't remember who's posting it, but I think it's uh, a Sav, is going to post it into chat. If they could post it into chat now, we've got to allow for a little bit of delay. Now, if I bring up uh, that and then go to... And then go to live chat roll. There's chat. Hello. Right. Right. Don't tweet yet, though. We're going to wait for the graphic. Okay. Okay. Okay, look, chat's gone all quiet. Let's just make sure. Let's just make sure you're you're all active. Oh, Twitter, hello. Okay, ha ho ha ye ooh, window live chat live chat. Okay, right. Okay, Sav has posted it. If you could copy and paste that into Twitter. Let's go to Twitter now. Now I'm going to let's let's do this by the book people. Let's go to let's go to chat roll. Let me copy and paste that. So I'm using exactly the same text. That's copy and pasted. I mean that's copied. Copied. On my case it's Apple C. <laughs> In your case if you're on a PC, it's uh, probably control C. Um right, let's go to Twitter now. There's Twitter. Okay, let's compose a new tweet, but don't send it. It's already in the little window, but that's that's the right. Now you will notice that that tweet exactly fits the maximum characters. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to say to you now, people, are you all ready? Are you all ready? Let me go back to chat. Let me go back to chat. Okay, from chat, can I just have a ready to go? Just uh, all ready to go? Yes, yes, think so. Okay, okay, okay. All right, good. Right, yes, Re oh, look at them all. All ready, all ready. If you need more time, just tell me and we'll allow it. We're all, we're all, we're all friends here. There's no, there's, you know, we're just looking to get it, get it to her as quickly as possible. And once we've sent it, I'll tell you who you're sending it to. I should have done that before, actually. Uh, this is uh, Linda McCavern, who's... Um, she she thinks we're all quitters, and they should be medicinalised. So we don't agree with that. So basically, you know, that's why we've said what we've said in the tweet. Right. So let me just go back to chat. Chat roll. There it is. Okay. And it's, I'm using the wrong mouse again. Ready, everybody's ready. People will be posting it now as it's just being posted on the forums. Winter Rogue, hang on, we're not ready. Okay, what? Yeah, don't send it yet. Don't send it. Don't send it. Oh, Mono Mac, evening all. What have I missed? Well, <laughs> you need to get to Twitter. You need to post the... Could we post the tweet into chat again, please? Um, just for those who may have joined slightly late. Thank you, Sav. Thank you very much. Okay. Ready now. Where am I posting it? 
you're posting it <laughs> you're sat you're posting it in Twitter so if you could log in to Twitter that'd be brilliant okay we're gonna go in a little in 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 a few minutes there is more to the show so um Okay, good. All right. Well, let's go then. Let's Twitter bomb. And if you're a little bit late, just do it in a few minutes. She'll get it. She'll get the message. Right. Okay. Here's the graphic. Twitter bomb. Hey, okay, right now let's go to Twitter and uh, let's see. <laughs> I've got to tweet mine. Let me tweet mine now. Boom! Mine's gone. Bombs are dropped. There we go. Well, nothing instantly has happened, <laughs> but um. The behind the scenes team are are keeping their eye on it. The last bit of chat in Skype doesn't make any sense, but that's fine. Um, something about a foot. Right, so let's go back to me and oh, let's let's just all relax, shall we, for a minute? Quite stressful. But um Right. There we go. I'm gonna play in my VT. Come back to the show now. We'll keep checking back on Twitter. Um let me just introduce that that's completely blown my mind oh right okay um during vt talk last week we discussed our campaign our smoke without fire now we you can find that on swof campaign and that's on facebook so we're very easy to find. If you haven't liked it already, go along, read what we've got to say and post on there and share your thoughts and, and, and what you want to happen and what you want to see. I'm currently on a epic quest to try and get as many people as I can involved, including forums, organisations, other people on YouTube, people who are vaping, who have you know started recently, you know, we're going to pull them all together and there's going to be a crowdfunding campaign to raise some cash to enable us to produce something of a broadcast quality that can go out there and people within the media and within politics will see it and think, hold on a second, they've got a point and they've spent some money on this thing and it looks important, I've got to pay attention and hopefully some of the stuff that we produce will go viral. Now we've just done a Twitter bomb. Imagine if we were sending that lady a video and she just had to watch 50 videos. She would have a lot to think about. Hmm. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the framework in place. We haven't launched yet and I know on one of my posts I said I was going to launch the crowdfunding tonight but there are several legal and financial things that have to be in place to ensure that when you give money to the campaign it is completely right we are not I am not doing this you know fly by night it's not something that it needs to be done right so a if we're legally questioned we can prove that we it's all it's all happening behind the scenes it's very exciting but these things do take time but it won't take long rest assured it will happen very very shortly I'm I'm as my wife will testify giving a lot of time to this and the people who have liked the Facebook page thank you very much some great comments I posted something on there a couple of days ago about t-shirts because we'll be offering we'll be offering like little activist pacts packs pacts um, activist pacts that packs packs that have t-shirts, hats, stickers, all that sort of stuff. And depending on how much you pledge, you know, it all it all matters. But say if, you know, you were giving the larger amount, you would get a lot more than if you were giving five quid. But you'd still get the same result because you're still giving into the same pot. <sighs> anyway, so on... When was it? When was it? 
Tuesday? It was uh, uh, no, it was yesterday. That's how weird this week's been. I spoke to Michael Clapper from Vape Stick, and um, well, hopefully the VT will explain everything. So have a watch. Right, I've got a Mr. Michael Clapper on the line with me via Skype, and he is very important in the company that we know as Vape Stick, and it's available in Tesco. And well, let's start by asking him a few questions, shall we? Michael, thank you very much for sparing us some time today. It's very much appreciated. Hi, thanks for having me. No problem at all. No problem at all. It's a pleasure. Could you just give us a little bit of background information as to how Vape Stick got started? I was a very heavy smoker, uh, 40 to 50 cigarettes a day. In fact, sometimes got up early just to make sure I could fit those 40 or 50 cigarettes in every day. Um, and uh, at the time, uh, I'd just come out of uh, my previous business, which I'd been in for 19 years, which was financial services. And my wife bought me a what I call a first generation electronic cigarette off the internet um, and she was pregnant with our now daughter and literally begged me to give it a try and, and to be honest I took one look at the thing and thought I wouldn't be seen dead using that thing in public that's just embarrassing and this was about three and a bit years ago but she persisted and I had a puff and I was totally blown away I just could not believe uh, the experience and I just knew at that exact moment that the moment I was ready to put down tobacco, it would be with something like that that I would do it with. And one thing led to another, and I started doing some research. I looked online. I saw this thing had become um, quite large already in, in America uh, and had become known as the act of vaping. I was looking for what I was going to do with my new business. Um, and I, uh, I just went on a mission and off I went to China and uh, met with all the licensed manufacturers and got an understanding of the different products out there. I'm very, very focused on branding and the brand and the packaging because I was very keen to try and move it away from being an electronic cigarette into something else, something that, you know, an evolution, if you like, of smoking as opposed to just a, a mimic or a replica of smoking. Um, and... Uh, a, a lot of work later and a lot of R&D later, we launched Vape Stick eventually in uh, November 2010. Um, to, without giving too much away or, or as much as you want to give away, how's yeah. business? Uh, business, I have to say, is just up and up and up. If anything, we've got uh, the problem we've got is, is making sure we never overtrade uh, too quickly because the business was and is privately funded. So it was all very well and good to have a product that everybody wanted. But, of course, if you get to a situation where you can't provide the stock at any time, you end up losing face, losing customer loyalty, and having to start again from scratch. So it's been a question of grow, contain, grow, contain uh, at a pace that we could manage it along the way. January the 1st, 2013, at 8 a.m., um, we were expecting some kind of jump because of you know people deciding to try these things for the new year. But... The jump we saw was you know, just under 300% jump from the previous quarter. Uh, we then expected that to you know, level off and calm down after a couple of weeks, uh, but it just hasn't. It's just kept going at that kind of level. So uh, we're very, very busy at the moment, as I'm sure most of our competitors are as well. I just walked into my local Tesco and there your product is. Could you just walk us through what Tesco needed you to prove to get yes. your product to their marketplace? Right, well, I mean, obviously, for the first thing we had to do was get them to want to stock vape stick as opposed to any other. And as you can appreciate, um, everybody that was interested in providing a mainstream electronic cigarette product as opposed to a specialist device, which we can talk more about, um, was up for you know being in Tesco. And um, so the first process was a series of tender meetings whereby they wanted to um, see the products, test the products um, from a user perspective initially, get to the point where they believed they'd found uh, the right quality, the right packaging, the right branding for them in their stores. Um, but once they got to that point, it was then down to um, certification. I mean, it was all about certification and testing uh, of the liquid, um, of all the electrical parts, as you'd imagine, uh, all the ROHS, the WE certification, um, everything in fairness that uh, ACETA has made every single one of its members do relentlessly and religiously ever since we started, which is one of the reasons why we got involved in ACETA in the first place. So actually, for us, that process was relatively painless, uh, and Tesco is extremely impressed with the level of diligence that we do and uh, have done and do on an ongoing basis. 
whilst it's not the law that these things you know can only can't be sold to under 18s and one of the things that we do is that through a CETA and it, just by in our sense common sense these things shouldn't be sold to anyone that's under the age of 18 um, and therefore we insist not only with Tesco but with all the retailers and indeed on all our labeling and packaging that these are for 18s or over only and I just think that protects us as an industry to make sure we're not targeting youngsters uh, where we shouldn't be. So on your product, it does say as well, it's not a smoking secession device. You know, it's not designed to stop people smoking. It's an alternative. How important Absolutely. do you think that is as a message for yourselves and for other vendors? I, I can't stress, uh, this is my biggest bugbear. I get extremely frustrated when I read um, from the opponents of electronic cigarettes that uh, vendors and distributors making claims that these things will help you stop smoking because we don't need to. As an industry, it's the exact opposite that we should be proclaiming from the rooftops. You know, These things represent a way to carry on smoking. They represent a middle ground, yeah? Because in the past, as a smoker, and I know full well having been one, you would either have to quit using some of those NRT products, which have a 93% failure rate, or you'd have to die. And they were your options. Um, and uh, none of them were particularly very attractive, frankly, to a smoker who enjoys the act of smoking on, on all sorts of levels. And what electronic cigarettes do is allow a smoker to carry on smoking, but eliminate the vast majority of, the, of all the downsides associated with tobacco smoking. And you know, let people work out for themselves what they want to do with these products. If somebody wants to supplement uh, and only use electronic cigarettes in those instances where they can't smoke, then good luck to those people. They'll soon find, uh, just by default, that they will be smoking less and less and less tobacco as every week goes on, because there's fewer and fewer places where you can smoke tobacco. Um, and ultimately, for me, that's how it worked. You know, I, I didn't intend to give up the first day I, I used an electronic cigarette or quit anything. Uh, my intention was to beat the system and carry on effectively smoking or vaping wherever I you know, chose. And all that happened was within a matter of two or three weeks, instead of smoking 40 to 50 cigarettes a day, I was smoking five. Um, and then I thought, well, do you know what? T tomorrow morning, I'm just going to wake up and instead of going for my cigarette because I can, I'm just going to go for the vape stick uh, because I can and see what happens. And it's been two and a half years and I haven't had a single cigarette since. You know, it's not a quit smoking device. It's an alternative. You know, I'm still smoking. I'm just smoking something better. Now, that leads me neatly on to the question about the EU regulations. How can you see that affecting vaping in general and your business? Well, clearly, uh, the EU uh, uh, proposals in the new tobacco products directive, as drafted, they would effectively end up, you know, banning the majority of useful electronic cigarettes across Europe. Um, you know, 0.4% or 4 milligrams or more needs to become a medical device. The big question for me is, it, it, you know, it, as drafted, the big question for me is, what does that mean? You know, what kind of uh, hoops and, and, you know, troughs do we have to go through in order to comply and be a medical device? What does the product look like at the end of that process? Can it have different styles, shapes, flavours? Uh, or does it just have to be, give a measured dose? Because at which point it will kill the whole point, the whole benefit, the whole reason why they're so attractive uh, to so many smokers, so many millions of smokers now around the world. Uh, under 0.4% will not satisfy the cravings of the majority of smokers. So they're going to need more than that. Uh, and obviously that's why the fight is so important. Uh, uh, we've already, through ACETA, gained huge support from uh, members of the European Parliament. Uh, there's lots of other precedents being set all over the world to argue against this. Um, and on the basis of harm reduction alone, not for any other reason, um, there should be some kind of, in our opinion, this is my personal opinion, a, a permissive regulation. Um, I, I certainly agree with a minimum age policy. I certainly agree that liquids should be tested to a certain standard. Uh, constructions and materials should be tested to a certain standard so that consumers know that what they're buying and what it says on the tin is what they're getting uh, in the tin. That I would support wholeheartedly, but I don't think it needs to go to the extent of having clinical trials and um, measured doses and all the other things that would ultimately come from a medical device, because that would be very detrimental to the industry. Uh, and we'll obviously fight that alongside ACETA uh, and all other groups uh, that are emerging to do so. And my personal opinion is it's going to be a long time yet before a decision is made, and it'll be unlikely 
they go the route that they've originally suggested. Vaping has got a certain image at the moment. Can you, te can you tell me what you think about what vaping represents to people at the moment, both the users that you've talked to and the, the, the government? There seem to be a, a, a opposing views on what these electronic cigarettes are and how they're represented. We were very conscious to have a mainstream product, you know, a product which is going to appeal to the masses as opposed to appeal to the niche. And what I mean by the niche is um, I kind of liken it to the people that might have in the past enjoyed roll up tobacco as opposed to just going in and buying premium set for the convenience factor. Um, you know, you've got all sorts of different weird and wonderful devices out there, lookings wise. Uh, and clearly, the more weird they look, inevitably the more effective they are you know the more vapor you can get the more you can control your your usage and uh and control the overall experience um but on a mainstream basis that's not really going to work because the first thing that a smoker wants you know 90 percent of the time if they're going to consider giving an electronic alternative a try is something that looks as close as possible to the cigarette they're used to what we found is that very soon after they've got their cigar like uh, they want something that represents the fact that they've moved on and they're not trying to mimic or copy being a smoker anymore. They're trying to say to the world and make a statement called, I've evolved, I no longer smoke, I now vape. Um, and therefore, I want something that looks a bit different. Now, um, that's why we moved on to black type models and chrome models. But we've tried to keep it as, as mainstream as we possibly can. Dare I say it, in recent months, We've seen a lot of celebrities, uh, a lot of cooler celebrities, um, start to come out and be seen staggering out of nightclubs and all sorts of things using these things, uh, electronic cigarettes, which is great because they have fans and uh, their fans smoke. And if, if you know every single smoker that sees somebody that they admire doing something like that, it gives it a certain coolness factor and an encouragement for them to try instead of the tobacco alternative. So that we support. It is becoming, um, you know, a trend. It's becoming trendy. Uh, it's much cooler to be seen vaping than it is to be seen smoking these days. You know, if you're smoking tobacco, you're like a social pariah in most places these days. Uh, but certainly not the case with vaping. Uh, the government's attitude is somewhat different. You know, we know that they've got a behavioral insights team that came out saying, you know, we'd like to see encourage more and more people to use these types of alternatives because we think they could save tens of thousands of lives a year. Um, but by the same token, you've got individual establishments that are very confused about what to do about these products, Manchester City being a perfect example. You'll know what happened there recently, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Um, and, and, and you can't really blame them, you know, because in the stadium, uh, football stadium, where you've got somebody on the other side seeing a bit of smoke emanating from another individual, from something that looks like a cigarette, you, you, they might well think, oh, I'll have a cigarette then, and then confusion reigns. It's in, a, in an enclosed environment, like pubs, clubs, uh, I think it's less of an issue because you can smell the thing. You know, if you can see a blue light on the end, you'd have to be a bit stupid to think that person was smoking a cigarette, you know. But nevertheless, different establishments got different policies, and I think the government is a bit torn internally as well, just like the regulators are all over the world. You know, these things have really thrown the balance out. You know, it, it's very, very disruptive. I mean, I've just been around the world, um, New York and Boston and London, talking to a lot of the big investment companies, uh, investment banks, uh, that have been heavily invested in tobacco or pharmaceutical industries for the last decades. Um, and they you know, really want to understand this, uh, these, this sector and this product, because you know, for the first time in decades, something's come along to potentially disrupt this harmonious balance between tobacco companies, pharmaceutical companies and governments, which is, you know, I say harmonious, but it's something that's just evolved over the years. You know, um, tobacco want, companies want to save as, uh, sell as many tobacco products as they can, but by the same token, they want to be seen to be doing all they can to assist with harm reduction. Uh, not an easy one <laughs> by, by any means to try and uh, dress up polit politically. Then you've got the pharmaceutical industry, who have obviously got a fairly significant business with NRT products, and I say fairly significant, certainly. By comparison to the tobacco industry, it's it's you know it's half a percent of the size. Um, but but by the same token, they've also got a bigger business, which is the drugs that they provide for smoking-related illnesses. <laughs> so that's another interesting point. And then you've got the governments, who of course want everybody to stop smoking on one side.
because it's doing such damage to their health and uh, cost to the health service, et cetera, et cetera. But by the same token, they don't really want everybody to stop smoking because that would cost them billions in tax revenue. So it, it's a dynamic which has been set over decades. And now suddenly electronic cigarettes have come along with the potential to disrupt that whole model. So I think that's why we've seen so many toing and froing and opponents trying to come up with lots of different ways to try and find a reason why they're such a bad thing. Uh, and they keep falling down, thankfully, at every hurdle. And then they come up with the next thing and then the next thing. And, uh, and we'll have to see where that all eventually leads. But the arguments against are becoming harder and harder and harder to justify. So Vapestick as an organisation, what steps, if, if a ban were to come in place or the regulations were so restrictive that they have to be taken off the shelves from Tesco, what steps are you taking to ensure that your product remains available and useful for people who are looking to make a switch? Well, I mean, obviously, it depends on the extent of what such a ban might be. You know, if, if the, uh, the outcome ultimately is that over a certain level of nicotine, these things need to be classified as medical devices, we would look very carefully at what that would involve. And we would almost certainly, you know, we're in this for the long run. We're in this to support our customers and to support our long term business model. So we would go through the motions to create a product range that would comply, um, subject to it not being so many tens of millions that we would be finished and there'd be no point in doing so. If if somebody like you know Tesco, for example, took the view called, well, we're you know, until that happens or until they're up to this speed, we'll pull them off the shelves, then obviously as long as the products are allowed to continue to be sold, we would continue to sell them up to whatever um, nicotine level we were able to um, under current GPSR regulations. And we would do that online and through any retailers that were less concerned. It's really a question of what the ban looks like. You know, if it's a ban, that's it's a ban. You know, and then you know, then you've got a situation like Canada where you can only sell devices nicotine free, and then it's down to the consumers themselves how they might go about getting some nicotine liquid. Uh, which, you know, Canada sales of electronic cigarettes are through the roof, um, even though they're banned there, you know, with nicotine. So, you know, everyone's just going online and buying nicotine liquid. So clearly that's not a very good way of, you know, monitoring quality and uh, making sure you, that your citizens are, you know, make, kept, kept safe. So there has to be a clever way of not creating some kind of black market. And um, we would want to work with, obviously, whatever the regulatory decisions would be to ensure that we complied, um, providing they weren't too prohibitive for us to be able to do so. Right, let's take it back to your products then. Have you got anything exciting coming up? Um, because I popped into my local Tesco and, and, and picked up one of your disposables, but I understand you've got more stuff coming along shortly. Well, I mean, the, the big change for us over the last three or four months has been a shift from three-piece uh, rechargeable models. Uh, I don't have to tell you and your viewers what a three-piece rechargeable model looks like, or it is, um, over to two-piece, so cartomizers. And we deliberately held off on the move to cartomizers, which might come as a surprise to you and your viewers, because... Uh, in spite of the frustrations attached with a three-piece model and having to work with you know uh, cartridges, atomizers, and batteries, we did find that the smoking experience, the quality of the vapor produced from our three-piece models, was significantly better. Certainly, this time a year ago, than that which was being generated from a cartomizer, which came across as more synthetic and um, less of a fulfilling, um, thick vapor experience. Now we played with the technology and we worked with our uh, manufacturers and we kept trying to come up with a cartomizer that we were comfortable with that replicated the same experience, uh, combinations of obviously different liquid and different construction. And we found the solution and we launched cartomizers uh, in December of 2012, uh, initially online, then rolled it out across all of our various models. Um, and now we're going through the transition of upgrading or swapping out all of the retailer uh, stock that's holding three-piece models uh, and replacing them with cartomizers. So that's a big uh, piece of news for us. And, and in fairness, now that we've got the smoke right, you know, I don't have to explain the benefits in terms of efficiencies, consistency, and that type of thing. Um, we're seeing it already. You know, in a very short period of time, we've seen the number of repeating customers coming back jump by a massive percentage. Um, so they're obviously much, much happier generally with cartomizer technology than they were with three-piece technology from a convenience point of view, if nothing else. Along the way, we've also had a number of very recent product innovations. We've launched a V-Shisha range, which is a five-pack of five multicolored uh, disposable units. 
uh, with jewel tips, um, you know, to, to tap into that market, which is clearly gaining in demand, which no doubt you know all about. Um, we've also got uh, what we call our VGAR, an 1800 puff electronic cigar, which we love. And one of the unique features about that is it's the only VGAR out there that has a whacking great blue light on the end of it when you inhale. We tested our prototypes at a black tie function we all went to, and we were, and they had orange lights. And we were harassed every 10 minutes by a security guard because they looked so realistic. So we went with the blue light and they've proved enormously popular um, because now suddenly you can have a cigar at a function or a party or a restaurant and no one will say a word to you with the big blue light on the end of it. So that's a big innovation for us as well. Um, the one area that we are going to be moving into later on this year is but with our Max model, uh, you know, an ego type model, we're going to be introducing refillable uh, sections to those so that people can actually start to put their own liquids in, but that's not coming till the later part of this year. So Michael, I see on your website as well that you've recently expanded where your product is available for sale. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, obviously we've got two parts to our strategy. One is very much online presence and making that as easy as uh, possible for people to buy and then come back and buy on a regular basis. But obviously High Street is, is also fundamental um, on, on a mainstream product basis. So Tesco is, is obviously a major, a major feather in our cap and we're thrilled to be in all the Tesco stores. Um, but we've also recently gone into all of the WH Smith retail uh, sites. In fact, this week, um, the, the delivery went in last week. Um, and so every airport train station will have our disposable products on their tobacco gantries. Um, we're also in Harrods and have been there for two years uh, and have consistently been one of the top selling products in their pharmacy department. Um, and we're in uh, Argos Online, Costco uh, Wholesalers, Macro, um, a, a growing number of Londis stores now as well and thousands of other independent retailers around the UK, like petrol station, four core groups, um, and news agents, uh, Smith's members, Menzies members, that type of thing. I also noticed that you've, you've produced some very nice, slick-looking adverts. The Vapestick Classic rechargeable model closely resembles the look and feel of a normal cigarette. The Classic comes with a signature blue LED light tip and delivers an amazing amount of vapour for its size, as well as that familiar throat hit you get when smoking a normal cigarette. Have you had any feedback about the, the quality of your, your adverts and, and what, what you've been putting on the internet? It, it's, it's a combination of style and quality and value, and they're the messages we keep trying to um, relay every time we do any form of advertising, whether it's print media or video. Vaping is the new smoking. I did see the Enjoy advert a couple of days ago, the new Enjoy advert, and uh, I have to you know, say that as far as you know, going viral online is concerned, hat off to them, that's going to do the trick. Um, I, I imagine it wasn't cheap either to get people like Courtney Love and the level of production uh, value that they got there. Um, but would Vapestick do something along those lines? Uh, my immediate reaction is not a chance because I can't imagine our friends at Tesco and Harrods would be too pleased about an advert like that with you know, unnecessary swearing like that. I just think wouldn't quite sit too well. Sure. It brings me back to the point that you brought up earlier, though, that um, these products... Are, are being considered to be cooler than smoking. Yeah, I, mean, I, I see the point. <laughs> I do see the point. Um, but the reality is, if somebody under the age of 18 wants to get a hold of a tobacco cigarette, they're getting hold of a tobacco cigarette. If the worst thing that happens is that same person or a, a different under 18 year old that was thinking about getting hold of a tobacco cigarette somehow gets hold of an electronic cigarette, um, it is almost certainly the lesser of the two evils. And, and <clears throat> we should be looking f more to normalise vaping as being the right uh, behaviour for anyone that would otherwise smoke. And so <clears throat> if youngsters, some youngsters do somehow get hold of these and bypass all of the restrictions in place, at least they're using a far less harmful alternative. OK, well, I thank you for your time. Uh, my viewers, I'm sure, have found it fascinating getting a, you know, a large vendor's feedback from, from the situation we all find ourselves in. Do you have any parting comments for the people that are fighting so hard to keep e-cigs where we need them to be? Yes, I absolutely do. I mean, the one good thing that's happened is that had the regulators wanted to put a stop to these products um, in the past, 
they would have had a far better chance of doing so a year or two years or three years ago than they ever would today. You know, the genie is now out the bottle. There are so many hundreds of thousands in the UK alone, millions of people around the world whose lives have literally been transformed by these products. Um, that is unanimously a very, very large and loud voice. Um, that has to be heard, both politically, commercially, uh, and from a harm reduction point of view. And the more of us that can rally together and let it be known how these products have changed our lives, uh, the more difficult it will be for regulators to restrict the ongoing availability of these products. So um, I thank everybody that's already uh, making the effort. I encourage anybody else that loves electronic cigarettes like we all do, to do the same and get involved um, because we do have a chance to make sure these things can continue as they are, but only if we speak as one voice loudly and very, very clearly. Michael Clapper, thank you very much for your time today. We appreciate it and we wish you all the best in the future and we hope to see you again soon on Vapor Trails TV. I'd love to come back. Thank you very much for having me, Andy. No problem at all. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Well, there you go, Michael Clapper from Vapestick. I would say on, on yeah, he's he's on message. Good guy, good guy, and uh, a good guy to have in our corner, I think, as well in terms of the fight. He's uh, he's happy to help us get the message out there as well, which is great, which is absolutely great. And I've got to say, forgetting, I had an emotional moment during that rather long VT, but I think what he said was valid and and great stuff. And I I, I thank him again for his time. And uh, you people out there in Twitterland, you really enjoyed dropping that bomb, didn't you? Let's have a look, shall we? Let's have a look how we're doing. Let's take it to this one here. It's gone crackers. Twitter has gone nuts. Yes, so there we are. Um, we did a rough tally while you were watching that VT, and we reckon <laughs> we reckon about 300 ish tweets went out but i see i've retweeted about i've retweeted every single one as you can see there i i might have retweeted a couple that were uh, about other things as well but i went on a retweeting fest so linda mccavin there's her youtube channel as well her comments are open on that i believe um you know if you're watching this don't ignore us We've got a voice and you're going to be hearing it a lot more. Um, we've all been using these things for a fair amount of time. And I speak for the viewers as well as myself is that they've transformed my my life. Not because I've quit smoking, but I've found a better way of doing it. And if you're watching this, you've just watched a vendor saying that. And that's going to massively affect his business and all the vendors across the country who all employ people. Oh, anyway, I'm going to bring this back. But thank you very much, everybody, for tweeting as much as you did. Um, they, they just keep on keep on coming. They keep on coming. It's fantastic. You'll be seeing this again. Um, head on over to Vapor Trails TV's Facebook page and suggest who you want us to tweet bomb again this time next week. You know, it's it's your show. You make the show. And as you've demonstrated very clearly tonight, you're passionate about it. And we thank you for your passion. And let's just do this thing. So uh, that Michael Clapper interview, he's very kindly allowed us to use his adverts as well, which include some that I didn't run in that VT. Um, and they explain e-cig technology perfectly. So as well as the interview, you know, that's the idea of the smoke without fire campaign is to gather interviews like that the crowdfunding allows us to actually go to their office and film them saying it in real life at the moment you know that takes a big financial investment and skype is the only way we can do it it works but you know it's not how the media operate the media go to these people they talk to them and we need to be taken seriously I think the tweet fest proves that we can all pull together. Twitter bomb. Well done, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking part in that experiment, and I'm happy to say it worked. So let's hear it for the Twitter bomb.
Righty ho then. On to the next thing. Um, I've got a cartomizer loaded up with some juice, and I've first got to start this with a bit of an apology to vaporworld.co.uk. Um, Paula, uh, I was a bit flustered at the end of my show the other week, and, and I said that her juice came from a different vendor. I apologise. Vaporworld.co.uk, and this is where this juice comes from that's sitting on my desk here. It's Moondrop. It, she sent me a big pack of Moondrop, and this is the last one that I'm that I've got in the pack um, and it is RY42 RY42 Moondrop from vaporworld.co.uk and uh, 24 milligrams 100% PG she knows what I like she knows what I like so RY4 is a favourite for many this is RY42 so is it approximately 10 point something better well let's give it a vape i'm running this on an mvp at approximately warm well, up to 106 uh 3.7 volts this is a standard resistance carto so i'm just going to bump it up this is the xl cartomizer so and i've just loaded it up during that vt what i am getting from that is lovely mouthfuls of caramel Vapor production is good, and um, bags of flavour. Now, I looked on the website for Moondrop, and uh, they said that uh, it's it's their take on RY4, but they hadn't tried it, I believe. Um, and I've got to say, if you like sweet, caramelly juices, I'm not getting any nuts. No nuts in this juice. Um, it is full of caramel, um, and... I'm unsure whether this includes the... I don't think... I'm not sure if this is a part of the alkaloid range. Maybe if Paula's watching from vaporworld.co.uk, um, she would clarify that. But I, it, this, this for me is a very nice after-dinner vape because it is very caramelly. It also goes very nicely with coffee. And let me just fill my mug up again because I have got a cafetiere down here. But I've got quite a lot left. So live on VaporTrails.tv, you see me using nicotine recreationally and drinking ca coffee which contains caffeine in it. So together they make the perfect combo, I think. Mm. Ah, Lovely. Very nice. So that's from vaporworld.co.uk. Apologies that I got the address wrong, but these shows fly together, especially tonight because my eye is on Twitter. And let me have a quick, let me just whack it across to Twitter. It's not live chat, it's Twitter. And uh, yes, so there you can see Twitter. And by all means, if you're on Twitter, if you're watching this show on replay, the. Um, the tweet that we sent will be in the comment section below. So if you feel that you want to tweet the text, go for it. You know, you, you, it doesn't have to happen all at the same time. It's just, uh, it's uh, just exciting when it does. So uh, yeah. Oh, the, the two new tweets. Simon Pegg's got something to say. Oh, there you go. Raymond. Raymond has tweeted it. So let's retweet him. Let's just click that and retweet. There we go. It's that simple. Oh. Kate has, has tweeted as well. Let's retweet that. So, yes, there we are. Twitter tastic. Right, let's drop to chat the 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 stars of tonight's show. And uh, whew, yeah, that was exciting. So let's go to chat roll. Hello, chat. Well done. Thank you very much. Um, I've got I've done everything that I was going to do in this show. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um I'm going to just chill out and chat with chat now. Um using my vaporworld.co.uk RY42 juice. So, let me ask a question to chat then. <clears throat> out of out of the people that we know, you know, like the big vendors and the people within this whole situation who would you want 
interviewed. Let me ask that question to chat. Now, politicians proving difficult to get hold of for clear reason. Also, um, I arranged uh, an interview with my GP. And as soon as he phoned me up and said, you want to talk to me about electronic cigarettes? And I said, yes. Uh, and he said, and I believe you want to film it? And I said, yes. And he said, well, I don't mind telling you one-on-one -on -one that you can continue using e-cigs. Um, but on an official level, I wouldn't be able to say that. So there, there are conflicting agendas. And we need to bring all those agendas down to one simplified form and I believe that's, you know, recreational nicotine does it for us. But let me just have a look at chat because it's whizzing past. Uh, Matt Gulluggle says, Bo boss of EE lights. Yes. Boss of Enjoy is coming up. Dave K, that's a good one. Oh, uh, maybe, uh, the, uh, y y yeah, I can, I can easily interview Dave K. Um, that's fine. Totally Wicked. Yes, yes. Um, Abe from Liberty Flights. They're all on the list. All these people are on the list. Absolutely, absolutely. And for the time being, Skype brings us together. But um, <clears throat> we do need the ability to get on out there and film these people. I'm losing my voice. I'm so excited. Uh, let's just go back to Twitter a second here. Let's see what's happening. Uh, two new tweets. Let's see if that's... Uh, yes, we've... Uh, no, yes, yes, Jill C. Baldwin retweet. Retweeting. Retweeted. All right, let's just have a skip through here. It's Grim Green's birthday today as well. Happy birthday, Grim Green. <clears throat> uh, you can see if we go down the list here, mm, I've been busy during that 25-minute VT. Anyway, so, yes, all good, all good. Let me go back to chat because uh, those those were coming thick and fast. Uh, live chat, chat roll. Yes, 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 yes. Keep it up. Yes, we are keeping up. Agree, Abe from Liberty Flights. Yes, we will get all these people. Um, let me think if there's anything else that I need to say. Uh, yes, we are going to be rolling out the ability for you to upload videos. Um, but as you know, uh, if you if you were to post a video to YouTube, I can grab that off YouTube and and use it in the promo as well. So if if you feel enthused after your tweetathon then please do that and uh, get in touch through the Vapor Trails forum or on Facebook and I will uh, download it and you will be archived and I ensure you that when you look at the promos that I will be producing for the Kickstarter campaign and for our, maybe even maybe next week I could work really hard and try and get a little video promo to accompany the Twitter bomb. Let's try and do that. Um, if anybody feels enthused to turn on their webcam and shoot a video Stick it onto YouTube and then let me know where it is and then I can grab it and download it. And then, as I say, you will be archived and you will be forever remembered in in the history of saving electronic cigarettes. Let me put it that way. Right. Interview Linda. All the vendors are on the list. Um, again, if a vendor is watching and they want to be featured, please do feel free to get in touch with me. I'll be only too happy to either Skype you or uh, once we have the ability to come and visit you or someone, uh, a colleague of mine will come and visit you and we'll, we'll get you on tape and get your message heard. That goes again, I'll say it again, that goes everyone out there, whether you be a forum owner, a Anyone who has got a vaping story, I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. And let's get it out there. Let's get it out there. Now, I think that clearly demonstrates the Twitter thing that it's it's a way to go. It's a way to go. We didn't know whether this was going to work, and we are so glad it did. So um, I'm reaching the end of my allotted time. And I'm hand on heart... I am incredibly grateful. The whole team is incredibly grateful. And you should all be grateful of each other. It's great. So I thank you all. I thank you. Let me just go back to chat. Chat. Chat roll. Yeah, Vaping Daz says it. You did fantastic. You did fantastic. Yes. Yes. You did. You did. And there'll be a lot more coming. There'll be a lot more coming. Right. Let me take it back to this. So, the first tweet bomb is completed. I thank you all for taking part. I thank you all for spending an hour with me on Vapertrails.tv. We have got a voice. We need to use it. Let's all keep retweeting. Let's make this trend. 
And on that note, I will wish you all well and uh, keep on vaping. iVapor, and iVapor Elixir proudly sponsors Smoke to Vape on Saturday. Saturday.